Okay, let's work on the quiz app. I've already saved my template as quiz app, and I'll just review some of the key parts of the template. The screen has been set up to stay in portrait mode. The title has been set to quiz app up here. The um, first component on there is an image. It's set to fill parent on the width, and its height is 50% of the screen. Just below the image is a question label. This is where we'll display the quiz question. Below that is a horizontal arrangement container that contains a text box where the user will type their answer, the answer button, and the next button. The answer button is what they'll click when they want their answer checked. The next button should advance the quiz to the next quiz question. And below that is the correct label. This is where we'll display whether or not they got the answer correct. We mainly want to focus on the blocks for this lesson, so let's go over to the blocks editor. We're going to use lists to store our quiz questions and quiz answers. So we're going to need variables for these lists, and there's going to be three of them. The first one is going to be called question list, the second one is going to be called answer list, and the third one is going to be called picture list. Now I'm going to show you how to construct the picture list and then ask you to construct the other two. A list is a collection of items that's indexed. The way we initialize a list is we could create an empty list or we can actually build a static list using the make a list block which we can expand to contain as many items as we want. This is going to contain three items and the picture list is going to consist of the names of these picture files. The first one is Alan Turing. The second one I'm going to put Mary Jackson and the third one will be the Grace Hopper. It's a good idea to copy and paste these because you have to spell them exactly right or the app won't work. What I'm going to ask you to do now is to use the make a list block to construct the answer list and the question list. Okay, so when you're done with that task, this is what your three lists should look like. And notice that these are set up as a parallel construct. So the first question here uh, corresponds to the first answer in the answer list, which corresponds to the first picture in the picture list, and so on. Now, one important thing you need to know about lists is that they are indexed. So we're going to set up an index variable here, and we're going to initialize it to 1. The index refers to the position of an item in the list. So Alan Turing is at index 1 in the answer list, and Alan Turing.jpg is at index 1 in the picture list. So in App Inventor, uh, lists are indexed from 1 to however many items there are in the list. That's not true for all programming languages, however. All right, so the next task is to make sure we can initialize our app properly. And to do that, we're going to code the screen when initialized. And what we want to do here is set the image and the question to the first image and the first question when the app starts up. I need to set the image picture to the first item in the picture list. Now, how do I do that? Well, I'm going to need a list operator, a list function, which I get from the list drawer. And the one I want here is the select block. So this says select list item, and it has two arguments, the list and the index in the list. So the list we want to select from in this case is the picture list, right, because we're assigning the picture. And the index we want is 1. Or another way to do that is assign it the global variable index. But you could also put the literal value 1 in there if you want. Then we need to do the same thing with the question label. So we want to set the question label's text to, uh, I'm going to copy and paste this. However, we don't want to set it from the picture list. We want to set it from the questions list. And again, we're setting it to index 1. And we know that the global index has been initialized to 1, so that should work. This would be a good time to test the app, so I'm going to pause here and run the app and make sure first question and the first image show up correctly. Okay, and as you can see when I start the app, the first image, the Alan Turing picture, and the first question show up on the app correctly. Uh, perhaps another thing we should do when we start it up is blank this out. I'm going to set the correct label, I'm going to set its text to just the blank string. The next task is to work on the next button. All right, so let's get the next button click handler out. And what we want to do is when the next button 
is clicked, if we're on question one, then we want to move on to question two. And if we're on question two, we want to move to question three. So let's do that. And we know how to do that. That's a matter of incrementing the index. If we increment the index by one, if it's one, it will go on to be two. So we want to set the index to index plus one. And then, the, and then what we want to do is display the picture at that index. So I'm going to just copy this block, because that's what that's doing, and the question at that index. So I'm going to copy this block. And I might as well also blank out the answer. So let's give that a try now. Let's test that. But OK, I'll hit the next button. And indeed, it goes on to the next question. And then if I hit the next button, indeed, it goes on to the third picture, Grace Hopper in the third question. However, look what happens when I hit next again. Whoops, I get this error. And I did that deliberately because I want you to see this error message, which is telling you exactly what's wrong. It's the select list item block. That's this block. And it's telling us that we're attempting to get item number four from a list that has only three items. And that's because right here, when we, when we add one to the global index, it goes from three to four. And then we try to get the fourth item from the picture list. But as you know, there's only three items in that list. So that's the problem. So what we need to do here is we need to do a wraparound algorithm. And for that, we're going to use an if statement. So we're going to insert an if statement here that will test if the index is greater than the length of the list, then we are going to set it back to 1. If the index is greater than the length of the list, now I could put the number 3 in there, but that would be a bad idea because that would be setting up our app so it will only work for lists of length 3. So instead I can use this function, this block, length of list block, and just take the length of the question list. I really could use any list. This will allow the app to work for different length lists in case you want to extend the quiz to more questions. So again, when the index is greater than the length of the list, so we want to set the global index back to 1. So now let's go back to our app. If I tap the next button now, it goes back to the beginning of the list. Next goes to the second item. Next goes to the third item. Next again goes back to the beginning. We've correctly implemented our wraparound algorithm. OK, the last task is to program the handler for the answer button. And so when the answer button is clicked, uh, compare the text that the user has typed in as the answer with the answer stored in the answer list. So let's do that. I'm going to show you a new block, the compare texts block. We're going to compare what they typed into the text box. So we're going to compare their text with the item from the, the answer list. And again, we want to select the item at the current index, because the index variable is keeping track of what question we're on. So we want one of these blocks again. And this time, instead of the question list, we want it to come from the answer list. So those are the two things we're comparing. Now we need to put those into an if-else statement. So if we compare those two things and they're equal, then we want to report that the answer is correct in the correct label. So we're going to set the correct label's text to the word correct. That will be a little more polite. We'll say Good, that is correct. If it's not correct, then we want to report that it's not correct. Sorry, that is not correct. Okay, so let's give this a try now. So for the first question, I think the answer is Alan Turing. Check my answer now. Sorry, that is not correct. And the reason it's not correct is because I typed it in lowercase here, whereas over here, the answer is stored as Alan Turing with initial capitals. So I need to correct that. And now when I test it, it reports that that is correct. Okay. Well, this is a big inconvenience for the user. So we're going to ask you to fix that in the enhancements. But you can see that the basic logic of the answer button is correct. Okay. So that's our quiz app. And now there are a few exercises for you to do to help you practice with using lists and also extending the quiz to a fourth question.